Pray in the Lord. We are going to pray for our Father in the Lord tonight as he's coming up to give us the word of life again. We want to comfort ourselves with the word of God. I want to read from Romans chapter 15 and I'm reading verse 19. Through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Oricom I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. We want to pray that mighty signs and wonders of God will never cease in our midst, even tonight, that God we inspire our Father in the Lord to give us the best from his word tonight. The word of the Lord will quicken us and in the name of the Lord will be glorified. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Father, we thank you because of tonight. We worship you, we glorify your name. We thank you for how you have started with us. And I pray tonight you will speak to us again in Jesus' name. The word of life that will come to us tonight will make us to make heaven at last in Jesus' name. Thank you because you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said... Father, we thank you for the leadership development meeting tonight. We pray you open our eyes to the treasures in your word in Jesus' name. And let your word strengthen us. Let your word quicken our inner man. That Lord will move forward in the work of the Lord with the everlasting arms underneath us in Jesus' name. We pray that every weakness and every dimness of sight you take away from us. Our passion, our purpose, our power, we move on to accomplish what you have called us for in the kingdom, in the field of service, in your work, in the ministry, in Jesus' name. We bless your name because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can have your seats. We're coming to Exodus chapter 1. And tonight we're looking at verses 7 through to 12. Exodus chapter 1, reading from verse 7. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty. And the land was filled with them. It tells us in verse 8, it says, Now there rose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. In verse 9, it says, And he said unto his people, That is to the Egyptians, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Verse 10, Come, come on. Let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when there falleth out anyone, they, may, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. In verse 11, therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their bodies, and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramses. Now in verse 12, but the more they afflicted them, 
they more, they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. We're seeing the children of Israel, 70 in number, coming into uh, Egypt. And Joseph and the sons of Joseph were already there. And as eventually they were growing and growing after the death of Jacob and after the death of Joseph, they grew and multiplied. They were becoming mighty in that land exactly as God had told Abraham because the word of God cannot be disannulled or reversed by any situation and by any power on earth and as they multiplied this pharaoh and this king that knew not, not knew not joseph then said look at these people they're multiplying number one if they continue like this they're already mightier than we are they might be so strong they join another country another nation and make war against us and they escape from the land escape from the land that's what god had told abraham that your people your descendants will go to a strange land that's egypt and then at the time appointed i will take them out of the land of egypt to come and settle in the land of canaan that plan of god that promise of God and that prediction and prophecy that's what Pharaoh did not want to happen of course Pharaoh did not know the intention of God and the plan of God but God had ordained that they will come out of the land and he didn't want that that's one of the reasons he then did what he did but the children of Israel began they continued to grow and were becoming mightier and mightier every time they persecuted them they oppressed them they afflicted them but the affliction the oppression and the persecution could not reduce them in any way tonight we're looking at the topic israel's protection and preservation under persecution israel's protection and preservation under persecution three things we're looking at number one we're looking at number one the multiplication of the population of israel Number two, the mischief against the posterity of Israel. Number three, the might and the preservation of Israel. Look at number one. Number one, the multiplication of the population of Israel. The will of God, the word of God, the way of God, the wisdom of God, what he intended to do. He was watching over the children of Israel. He had a plan. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jacob became Israel, and then out of one of the children, one of the tribe, Judah, Christ will come. And that had been decided before the beginning of the world. If Egypt, if they were able to crush, if they were able to exterminate, if they were able to destroy the children of Israel, how will Christ come? That's the reason why the plan of Pharaoh could not take effect and could not be fulfilled. And they still multiplied that population of Israel despite what the children of Egypt, what they did. Look at Exodus again, chapter 1, verse 7. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and their works exceeding mighty exceedingly mighty and the land was filled with them look at three things here number one we're looking at the promise for the people of israel number two the performance of the promise given to israel number three the preservation despite the persecution of israel number one the promise for the people of israel see what god had said in genesis chapter 15 verse 5 genesis 15 verse 5 and he brought him forth abroad and said look now toward heaven 
until the stars if thou be able to number them and he said unto him so shall thy seed be look at the stars if you are able to number them which means they were innumerable they were numberless and as they were numberless that talks about their multitude it says so as numerous as they are as uncountable as they are as many as they are so shall thy seed be that the promise that they will grow into a multitude look at verse 6 in verse 6 and he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness chapter 26 of Genesis looking at verse 4 and I will make thy seed to multiply the promise had been given to Abraham and the promise is now given to Isaac his son and I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven and will give unto thy seed all those countries and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed that's bringing in the promise that Christ will come and through the sacrifice of Christ and through the provision of Christ and through the death of Christ then salvation will come to all the nations of the earth because of that final promise of God and that final prophecy that's why everything that anyone did against the people of Israel that's why it could not succeed because those promises and prophecies were tied to the coming of Christ look at verse 5 in verse 5 it says because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge my commandments my statutes and my laws look at chapter 35 now genesis 35 and we're reading from verse 11 it says and god said unto him he's talking to jacob now i am god almighty be fruitful and multiply be fruitful and multiply out of the mouth of two or three witnesses the truth shall be confirmed out of the two or three prophecies the prophecy will be confirmed it says unto Abraham unto Isaac now unto Jacob it says be fruitful and multiply a nation and a company of nations shall be of thee and kings shall come out of thy loins and you know this is how the king of kings and the lord of lords this is how he came from the tribe of Judah one of the tribes of Israel again remember God was doing all this so that the king of kings the lord of lords the prince of peace and the one that will rule all over the whole universe so that he will come and it will come through the tribes of Israel and that's why God kept on repeating the promise that he gave unto him chapter 48 we're looking at verse 3 in chapter 48 verse 3 and Jacob said unto Joseph God Almighty appeared unto me at laws are in the land of Canaan and bless me look at verse look at the next verse here verse 4 and said unto me behold I will make thee fruitful and multiply thee and I will make of thee a multitude of people and will give this land to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession again the land of Canaan had been given unto Abraham Isaac and Jacob as an everlasting for an everlasting possession and all that uh, Pharaoh was saying uh, don't multiply and become mighty and then link up with another nation and fight against us and then go out they will go out of the land of Egypt whatever the plan and whatever the plot and whatever anyone would do the Lord
God had given the land of Canaan, not Egypt, but an everlasting possession unto Israel. Now, everything is summarized in 1 Kings chapter 8, reading from verse 56. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 56, Blessed be the Lord that has given rest unto his people Israel, according to all that he promised there has not failed one word of all his good promise which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant. No promise of God can fail. No promise of God will fail. And the promise he has made to us, the Israel of God, the church of Christ, the church of the living God, that promise, the same way he fulfilled the promise for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and for Israel, and multiplied all those children of Israel, the same thing you will find that his promise to the church will not fail upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church the promise he has made for the Christian for the individual Christian heaven and earth may pass away but his word of prophecy and his word of promise cannot fail, fail, fall away cannot fail because the promise of God is yea and amen in Christ to everyone that abides in Christ we're looking at number two Number two, the performance of the promise to Israel. The performance of the promise he had made that performance unto Israel. In Exodus chapter 1 verse 7, And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied. And was exceeding mighty. And the land was filled with them. That the performance of the promise. The Lord said, I haste him to perform my word the word of god to israel to the church to the christian to the believer to the consecrated and committed the word of god the promise of god will have performance and fulfillment look at deuteronomy chapter 10 reading from verse uh, verse 20 deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 20 thou shalt fear the lord thy god him shall thou serve, and to him shall thou cleave and swear by his name. Verse 21. He is thy praise. He is thy God that has done for thee these great and terrible things which thine eyes have seen. In verse 22, it says, Thy fathers went down into Egypt with three score and ten, seventy persons, and now the Lord thy God has made thee as the stars of heaven for multitude. They had multiplied. There were 70 when they went in. Now there were more than 700. More than a million and it was still growing. It tells us in Deuteronomy uh, in, um, in, in Acts chapter 6 reading from verse 7. See the promise he had made to Israel and see the promise not being fulfilled and performed on the church it says and the word of god increased and the number of the disciples multiplied in jerusalem as you look at israel in the natural you look at israel in the spiritual and you look at the church and you see that the faithfulness of god reaches unto the heavens that what god had done for the children of israel is doing for the church and the word of god increased and the number of disciples multiplied in jerusalem greatly and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Acts chapter 9, reading from verse 31. In Acts chapter 9, verse 31, then at the church's rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and, uh, and Samaria, and they were edified, walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied so all that were read in the old testament 
being fulfilled in the New Testament. All that we have read in the New Testament about the church being fulfilled now in these last days concerning the church of the living God. And all that you have read in the lives of other Christians, other believers in the Bible, you can take that and apply it to your life because as it was done for Israel and then the church, it was done for the early Christians and then for the Christians today, it was done for others in the past and then for you now in the present, it will be done in Jesus' name. We're looking at number three here. Number three is the preservation despite the persecution of Israel. The Lord preserved them. He had to preserve them because if they were not preserved, his purpose will fail. And his purpose cannot fail. If they were not preserved, the covenant he had with Abraham will fail. And he is the covenant keeper. His covenant cannot fail. It's because of that we understand. Anytime you look at the word of God and you see the promise of God and you see the prophecies of the Lord, you know this cannot fail because God is a promise keeper and he is a covenant keeper the preservation despite the persecution of israel look at psalm 105 reading from verse 24 psalm 105 verse 24 and he increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. In verse 25, it says, He turned their heart to hate his people and deal subtly with his servant. We're coming to Acts chapter 7, verse 17. It says, But when the time of the promise drew near, which God had sworn to Abraham, the, pe the people grew and multiplied in Egypt. And then in verse 18, till another king arose, which knew not Joseph. You are following the trend. You are following the fulfillment. You are following the performance. You are following that God never forgets what promise he has made. Abraham might have gone to glory. And the promise he made to Abraham still continued. Isaac might have died and gathered to his father Abraham up yonder. Yet the promise God had made to, to Isaac will not fail. And even Jacob might have gone. And Joseph might have gone. And all those original patriarchs, they all might have gone. But the promise of God. God still remains and God is still watching over his word to perform his word. The same thing that Christ gave the promise to the church and Christ has gone to heaven but the promise remains and Peter and John, James and the rest of the apostles, they have all gone but the promise still remains. Those people that God used to write the New Testament and the Old Testament, they might have gone to glory, but the promise of God that he made and they wrote now, all those promises, all those predictions, all those prophecies are still intact and they are going to be fulfilled even on the church at this time and on every Christian of this generation in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 16, we're reading from verse 18. Here Christ said, And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell as mighty as Pharaoh, as mighty as Nebuchadnezzar, as mighty as Herod, as mighty as any uh, difficult oppressor, despot in the world today, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. A greater amen. amen. Acts chapter 5, reading from verse 38. And now I say unto you, refrain. 
from these men, uh, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the Sanhedrin, the council, they were trying to stamp out, stamp out the church, crush the church, destroy the church, scatter the church. And Gamaliel now told the apostle to step aside and he told the council, he said, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this council or this work be of men, it will come to naught. He said, There's no point fighting, there's no point persecuting them. It's either of men or it's of God. If it's of men, it will fizzle out by itself. Anybody is doing something and then you're trying to fight, why are you fighting? Are you struggling? If it be of man, it will not see the light of day. It will not stand. It will be crushed. It will be scattered. If it be of men, it says, it will come to not. Verse 39. Verse 39 says, but if it be of God, if the posterity of Israel be of God, if the people of the church, if it be of God, if the establishment of the church be of God, if the planting of the church be of God, if the growth of the church be of God, if the progress of the church be of God, if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, no matter what power you have, and no matter what plot or project you have, if this be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, less happily ye be found even to fight against God. And when man fights against God, that man is going to be a loser. I said the man will be a loser. When any community, when any country, when the whole globe, the rest of the world, the whole universe, when they fight against God, their maker, the whole globe, all of them, all together, will be a loser. God will be the winner in every battle, in every war, in every conflict against him, anytime, anywhere, by anyone, in Jesus' name. Think about your life. God has raised you up to do something. God is moving you on to make progress and God has planted you where you are, doing what you're doing, and you're so doing that this is what you will be. Anyone, any group of people, any company of people fighting against you and against the purpose and the plan of God for your life, that man, those men, those people, they'll be terrible losers in Jesus' name. And you will be a winner. You'll be a winner with God in Jesus' name. But if this be of God, ye cannot overthrow it. Let's aptly ye be found even to fight against God. We're coming to point number two here. Point number two, the mischief against the posterity of Israel. We're coming to Exodus chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 8. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt that knew not Joseph. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, and he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. More and mightier than we. You can uh, you can see there a speedy growth because before they came to Egypt, Egypt was already large 
and people from all nations were coming to buy food from Egypt and they had all these various clans and tribes and provinces in that whole land and yet now as Israel came in and 70 souls came in they so multiplied that they became more than the children of Israel now the Egyptians also had military power before the children of Israel came but now these uh, children of Israel that came will say lately they have become mightier in strength and mightier in power than the Egyptians and that's what Pharaoh here was observing then in verse 10 it says in verse 10 come on let us deal wisely with them wisely don't you misunderstand the word wise or wisdom there is uh, devilish wisdom there is human wisdom and then there is heavenly wisdom which is godly wisdom the wisdom he was referring to here which some people are carrying about is the wisdom of the world but that wisdom of the world paul the apostle said the people of this world in their wisdom not knowing the plan of god he crucified the prince of glory he said let us deal wisely with them lest they multiply that is let they continue multiplying and it come to pass that when they are fallen out anyone they join also unto our enemies and fight against us and so get them up out of the land but they'll come out i said they will come out look at verse 11 in verse 11 therefore did it search over them task masters to afflict them with their burdens and they built for pharaoh treasure cities python and ramses before i go off from that be careful your relationship with the world the children of israel came in as free men respected men honored men pharaoh told um, joseph bring your people you've been so nice to this land bring them and put them in the richest place in the wealthiest place and take care of them they were not slaves so they came in and they were free and they were living separate in the land of goshen and then they kept on multiplying but they didn't watch because little by little the egyptians now started asking them to do this to do this at that time there was no slavery it was just can you do this yes we can can you take care of my sheep of my cattle because you are versatile in taking care of cattle yes we can and they did but little by little they slaved them they, they became slaves they were not free anymore little by little they took them away from just taking care of themselves or taking care of cattle and they became born servants they put them into bondage you see in the world if you're not careful with the people of the world what starts from normal fellowship normal friendship normal can you help me do this normal interaction eventually become slavery that they slave you and you don't know in the passage of time in the process of time when you lose your liberty and you lose your freedom and you become a total slave grinding your nose on the on the uh, concrete land i pray god will give us wisdom in jesus name be careful who we'll say yes to do this yes sir do this yes madam and then yes yes then it becomes something compulsory have you not done that they become something 
that, that's your duty. Have you not done that? Then you become a slave. You don't have any voice again, any mind again. And you don't know where you're going anymore because now you're a total slave. I pray God will deliver us from total slavery in Jesus' name. Now, the mischief against the posterity of Israel. We're looking at this under three subtitles. Number one, the plot to afflict and enslave. To afflict and enslave. Number two, the plan to assimilate and exterminate. And then number three, their part to advance and expand Israel. Look at number one. Number one, the plot to afflict and enslave Israel. Already we have seen from what we have read in chapter one that they wanted to enslave them, afflict them. In chapter three, Exodus chapter three, and I'm reading from verse seven. Exodus chapter three, verse seven, and the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. They started with affection. We love them. Because of you, Joseph, tell them to come. We love them. We love to see your people. And then when he was going to bury a Jacob, he said, go with them. And then they selected people, key people from Egypt, and they went with him to bury his father Jacob. That was affection. But little by little by little, affection turned to affliction. It, it happens without even you knowing in the process of time. And in your life, if you don't understand, you just glide and glide and glide from affection to affliction. Until God said, the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. And I've heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. Look at this in verse 9 now. In verse 9, God repeated the same thing. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. And I have seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Oppressed them. But please understand you see all those things they were doing you oppress them you say why didn't god remove that oppression at that time you see the children of israel only knew about cattle because they were cattle rearers but they needed strength and they needed uh, the ability and the skill to know how to build because in coming out, when they get to the wilderness, they'll be building the tabernacle. They'll be building the altars and all the things that God wanted them to build. So he allowed that, that they will have experience. Not only that, he toughened their mind. He made them tough and also their muscles. You see, in life, if you only eat, but there's no exercise, there's no movement and you are walking in the office and see city just sitting behind the text your joints will not be able to carry your weight eventually you become so big that your joints cannot carry you you're not agile you're not flexible and your muscles are not strong your muscles are weakened and so if you're not to walk from Egypt and you're to walk to the land of Canaan no chariot to carry you you will not be able to do anything can you imagine all those three million people as they were going through the Red Sea they will not carry anybody on the stretcher they were all strong there were not, not any feeble person among them that the reason God allowed that because all those things they were doing was they, they were developing them and making them strong physically in your life if uh, you know you have some physical things to do and you do that with pleasure and you do that with a desire and you do that enjoying what you are doing 
the physical things will strengthen you will strengthen you to the point that all your inner organs and the and the bones and the joints and everything you'll be strong in jesus name you will not be feeble and you may have to carry anything in. In fact, you might even decide that once in a while, carry something in and push something and pull something so that all those physical things you are doing will strengthen you for your future journey in Jesus' name. They were strong. I will be strong. I said I will be strong. And you have to do something and practice something so that You'll be strong in Jesus' name. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 28, and I'm reading from verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 20, 26, we're reading from verse 8, verse 6, rather, thank you, verse 6. We're looking at Deuteronomy 26, verse 6. And the Egyptians evil entreated us and afflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage and then in verse 7 in verse 7 and when we cried unto the lord god of our fathers the lord heard our voice and looked on our affliction and our labor and our oppression then in verse 8 it says in verse 8 and the lord brought us forth out of egypt with a mighty hand at the right time, the Lord will bring you forth. He'll bring you out. And with an outstretched arm, and with great terribleness, and with signs, and with wonders. Look at number two. Number two is the plan to assimilate and exterminate Israel. What does that mean? Look at that. Exodus chapter 1, reading from verse 15. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the same is of, of the one was Sephram, and the name of the other poor. In verse 16, and he said, when ye do, uh, when ye uh, do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then he shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. Why? Why would somebody have a kind of plan to say, if it's a baby boy, kill that boy, every one of them. Don't allow any baby boy to, uh, to live. But if it's a baby girl, save her alive. Why would somebody do that? Look at verse 22. In verse 22, and Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, every son, no exception. Every son that is born, ye shall cast into the river, drown them. And every daughter ye shall save alive. What's the plan? Pharaoh, what do you have in mind? If all the boys are killed, then there'll be no nation called Israel. The girls are saved alive. And the Egyptians, when those girls grow up, no man, nobody to marry, they will marry the Egyptians. And so Egypt will remain, but Israel will be exterminated. That's the thing he was planning, that there will be no nation of Israel anymore. That all you will have will be the Egyptians and the men all dead because the older generation they will grow and die and all the younger generation there will be no man no boy no youth no teenager and no young adult no adult of men but only the girls will be growing and the girls don't have they don't know where to run to and there's no place to run to they'll be assimilated into egypt and then israel 
exterminated. Look at Psalm 83, reading from verse 4. Psalm 83, reading from verse 4. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. That's the purpose. Let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. That was the plan. But the Lord frustrated all the devices of the enemy. And for you today, say for me today, the Lord will frustrate all the plans and the plot of the enemy against you and against your family. In Jesus' name. Let me say something now. You see, this is a church denomination. We have that other church denomination. This is Christian, let me use the word, religion. And then we have another religion. You know the name of that religion. There are people in the church. They have doctrine. They have everything intact. But they prevent their young people from getting married in time. The other people that do not have gospel, doctrine, holiness, sanctification, they allow their people to marry easily. But logically, those other, other denominations will be growing and growing. Now, the other religion, apart from Christianity, will allow not only that they marry quickly, but that they marry one and two and three and four, and some of them go beyond the four. What's the implication of that? That religion will keep on growing. Even if they don't do evangelism, even they do, if they don't do proselyting, even if they don't rush after people to be converted to their religion, they're multiplying biologically. When a man has, uh, you know, four wives or five or six or seven, and they're reproducing, and then the church that is earnestly contending for the faith was delivered unto the saints. Our young people want to get married. What are you thinking of marriage now? What accommodation do you have? What job do you have? How much are you earning? Have you built a house? Are you mobile? And all those questions, anybody that cannot answer all those questions, no marriage now in the future. All those other people that get married easily, we're not talking of compromising, we're talking about easing up and allowing people that need to get married, let them get married. If Jesus tarries, even their children that were bring up in the Christian way will we'll also grow in Jesus' name. But if we don't even get married in time, do you know the time, uh, you know, some of the people in, you know, I don't know whether committee or whatever, the time I got married, how old are you now? I'm, so, you're too early. Why are you rushing? Why are you too much in a hurry? Now, when the older people die off, where is the church? Because late, late marriages, and they almost, the ladies are almost getting beyond the age of giving birth before we allow them to marry. Let's understand, the enemy can use us against ourselves that we will not multiply. And then we'll be taking joy in the fact that we're firm, we're strict, and we're destroying our future. The Lord will not use you to destroy your future. The Lord will help you. Your children, young ones, they want to get married, is up. And let us move on. And this church will grow spiritually, will grow numerically, will go biologically. You will see your children and grandchildren and great grandchildren before you die in Jesus name 
But as long as we tie the rope on their neck and we have this law, this rule, this regulation, how can you see that? May the Lord give you wisdom. We're looking at number three here. Number three, we're looking at their part to advance and expand Israel. These uh, children of Israel themselves, they had a part they were going to play so that they will advance and so that they will expand. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 8, reading from verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 8, reading from verse 1. And uh, the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do that ye may live and multiply. The commandments I give you, I'm going to be watching if you're keeping these commandments and you are living by the word that I've given you, then you will live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 30, reading from verse, verse 5. It says, And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possess, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. I didn't hear your amen. amen. Multiply thee beyond and above thy fathers. Verse 6. In verse 6, and the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God and all with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. When they gave themselves to the Lord for their hearts to be circumcised and to love the Lord with all their heart, all their soul, all their mind, it released God to fulfill the promise to them that they will live and they will multiply. We'll come to point number three now. Point number three, the might and the preservation of Israel. The might and the preservation of Israel. Exodus chapter 1, we're reading from verse 9. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, it says, But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they, the children of uh, Egypt, they were grieved because of the children of Israel. Verse 20, the latter part of verse 20, it says, And the people multiplied and worked very mighty. The might and the preservation of Israel. We're, we're looking at three things here. Number one, more multiplication amidst the enemy's affliction. Number two, multiple might above excessive antagonism. Number three, ministerial mastery over extreme adversities. Let's look at number one. Number one is uh, the multiplication amidst the enemy's affliction. Even though they afflicted them, yet they multiplied. It tells us in Psalm 105 verse 24. Psalm 105 verse 24, and he increased his people greatly. They multiplied greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. You'll be stronger than your enemies in Jesus' name. You know, sometimes we have uh, children at home, and then we have uh, servants, maids, 
helping us at home and our children and those um, those helpers in the home they are more they are almost of the same age and we don't allow our children to do anything because it's my child the girl will not allow her to learn how to cook the helpers at home will do that and then we don't allow our children to wash plates or wash clothes or wash anything or clean the house or make their bed the people those boys and girls of their age who are serving and helping at home they're the people that do all those things now the problem is those uh, servants or maids or, or helpers at home they're going to have a better marriage in the future because they know how to cook they know how to you know make their bed they know how to clean the house they know how to do everything when they get married although they were servants at home they'll have better life than the children our own children were pampering we were so rich we have everything will not allow them to walk the car is there if they're going a few one kilometer ahead we'll say let the driver take them and go there they'll be useless in the future but if you expose your children to the same things those helpers are doing at home you're preparing the children for the future the people of israel they all those people they need to have the strength they need to have the ability but it's the people that were doing the work for them that are becoming stronger and stronger and stronger let's learn from all this so that even in the present time, our families will be strong. And our generation will be stronger than all the lazy people that don't know how to do anything in Jesus' name. Uh, uh, can you see those people, those uh, young people who are living with you after they've done all that work and everything? Uh, they still go to do their homework. They go to do their assignment and they are awake. Why? The physical exertion and the way they are training themselves and the way all those things are getting results over them, uh, they keep them awake. And they're able to do their work. And even at the present time, our lazy children that we are not bringing up properly will not allow them to wash anything, touch anything, clean up anything. Their brain also, they cannot choose their brain. But these others who have been even over-labored, they are the people, academically, they are strong. And in mind, they can bear whatever. While your children, you know, will come home and say, eh, Daddy, Mommy, somebody looked at me this way and bullied me. I'm afraid to go to school. Those other children, because of the rigor they are put to, they're not afraid of any, any bully. They go back to school and they're doing well. I pray God will give us wisdom that we train our children the same way we are training the people who are living with us in our families and you will be strong our children will be stronger stronger than their enemies and their bullies and their persecutors in jesus name and look at uh, Acts chapter 12. Uh, I'm reading from verse 24. Acts chapter 12, verse 24. But the word of God grew and multiplied. Uh, Herod laid hand on James and killed him. Uh, but the word of God grew and multiplied. Herod, in that same chapter, put uh, Peter in the prison. And he was thinking to kill him the following day. An angel came from heaven and delivered him. Uh, and even that fell him that uh, Herod himself he spoke and he said that's the voice of God not the voice of a man an angel came from heaven and smote him finished him but the word of God continued above our enemies the word of God continued above those distract detractors the word of God continued and the word of God from your mouth will continue beyond your persecutors and your enemies in Jesus name we're looking at number two number two multiple might above excessive 
antagonism. Uh, what we're seeing um, in Exodus chapter 1, reading from verse 7, it says, And the children of Israel were fruitful. And the children of Israel were fruitful. We are the Israel of God. You'll be fruitful. In your family, you'll be fruitful. In the work of your heart, you'll be fruitful. Spiritually, you are tired of amen. Spiritually, spiritually, you'll be fruitful in Jesus' name. We learn about you. We learn about your children. We learn about your grandchildren. We will even hear about your great grandchildren in Jesus' name. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly. Abundant life will be yours and multiplied and what exceeding mighty and the land was filled with them. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, therefore God dealt well with the midwives. You know what they did and God said because they walked according to his plan in the preservation of the children of Israel he did well with the midwives. And if you today if you walk in line with the plan of God for the church, if you walk progressing with the church and making the church to prosper and to grow and to progress, the Lord will deal well with you. And the people multiplied and worked very mighty. Mighty, mightier, very mighty. We're looking at number three here. Number three, ministerial mastery over extreme adversities. If he did that for the children of Israel, now the church of the living God, he will do more for us in Jesus' name. As we continue what he has called us to, as we concentrate on what he has given us to do, this work will not fail in our hands. We're looking at Second Timothy chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 1. It says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. The same commit to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Paul at Timothy under his tutelage, under his training. And Timothy was to have faithful people that he will commit the work to. Now, a Paul, an aged person, will not allow the Timothys after him, the spiritual sons, after him to do anything at all, uh -uh, they will spoil it. They will not do it well. They will not uh, put it right. Timothy will not grow. And Timothy will not have any advance at all. It is through those mistakes Timothy might make while Paul was still alive. And he will say, no, don't do it this way, do it that way. It's through that he will grow. And Timothy also, if he held on to everything and said, uh -uh, I'm not going to, what Paul had committed into my hands is so precious. And none of these younger people can handle it. The work will not grow. What happens in the physical? That we do not allow our children, uh, when I say our children, our young adults to get married in time. The same thing will happen in the spiritual. That we don't commit anything to the hands of the younger generation of believers. Their youth, we don't even give them an, a chance. We want to have, um, you know, youth church in that group, in that group, in that group. And then we look for each little. We say we cannot find 
really we are afraid if we commit anything to these people young people are like young people they will spoil the church and the you know youthful exuberance will overtake them look at what the apostle is saying by the spirit of god the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men the faithful young men the faithful younger sisters and we commit to their hands who shall be able to teach others also we will do it in jesus name you know when some of these uh, young people will say they are young and there may be something happens that uh, you know upsets them and they go to you know the church across the road or the church across town once they see them where you coming from i'm deeper life come and then they give them maybe a pastoral position and those young people that we will not use here they are helping those churches and those denominations they're preaching the word and they're developing strategies and making those churches to grow. I pray that we will not be losing our young people and our, our younger generation to all those churches in Jesus' name. We'll train them. We'll equip them. We'll engage them. Will enlist them in the work of the Lord, and this work will prosper in their hands while we're still alive in Jesus' name. Give me headquarters, amen. Look at look at verse 3. In verse 3, it says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. Verse 5. And if any man also strive for masteries, that's what we should strive for in our lives, in our profession, in our work, in our family, in our ministry. Strive for mastery. Any difficulty, any challenge, master that. So that by the grace of God we have ministerial mastery over extreme adversity. Yet you see not crowd except you strive lawfully. I pray that everything we need to master every area of ministry the Lord has committed into our hands, the Lord will give us in Jesus' name. And everything we're hearing we will effect them, practice them so that there will be a performance by God of all his promises and prophecies in our lives, in our church, in our ministry, in our families, in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and take whatever we have learned today to the Lord in prayer. That God will help us, will be doers of the word, will, be, will not be hearers only. Please open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray that the Lord will help us. Practice will lead to performance. If we hear the word of God and we do not practice it, then the word of God will just be lying fallow. Therefore, we need to talk to God and say, God, all these things you are sharing with us, Give us the grace to practice them. Give us the grace to practice them. We are so fortunate in deeper life that we are exposed to the truth of the Word of God. And we see the nitty-gritty 
of the simplicity of the word of God. And it is only when we allow this word of God to miss the faith in our heart, we have seen the reason why we must expand. We have seen the reason why we must develop the younger generation. We have seen the reason why we must not allow the word of God to die. We have seen the reason why there must be continuity. And we have been assured that as long as we continue with the Lord, we have nothing to fear. We should give concentration to the little flock in our midst. Jesus did. He told us in Luke chapter 12, verse 32, He said, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And that is the principle we are hearing tonight. Let's involve the younger generation. Let us support the upcoming ones. God wants us to increase and expand. Don't overindulge the younger generation. Don't say they cannot do this. Why you are using others? But invariably, you are developing others Why? you are neglecting your own children. Let's pray that God in his mercy will help us. This one we have heard will yield fruit in our hearts. We have seen the reason why we must encourage our young ones to marry early. All these man made stumbling blocks we are placing before them will be working against us eventually. But we have been told today God wants us to increase by leaps and bounds. The Bible says we shall break forth to the right and to the left. It is the will of God that we blossom. And in our own time, we see these children doing great things. God wants us to multiply. God wants us to increase. Increase in wisdom. Increase in stature. Increase spiritually. Increase in number. In every ramification. That is the only way we can ensure prosperity. The continuity. An advancement. God has performed the promise of his promise in the life of the of the children of Israel is still the same God we are serving. Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, that this Jesus, this our God, is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Therefore, we need to hold on to his promises. We need to rejoice. That this word we are being reminded of, they are still alive. God wants us to be healthy. God wants us to be strong. God wants us to advance. God wants us to occupy the, the gates of our enemies. 
God wants us to be greater than our enemies. We saw the way God did it. The only condition is let us not disobey the word of God. Let us not make God to be angry against us. Let us hold on to the faith. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, as we have heard tonight, what a glory he shares on our way. When we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who we trust and obey. Whatever we have heard tonight, I believe that nobody is going to rebel against it. I've heard tonight, the Lord is interested in us. The Lord is fighting along with us. The Lord will preserve us. The Lord will help us. He said, fear not, little warm Jacob, I will help you. The Lord is promising us he will help us. There is preservation despite persecution in the land of Egypt. God was watching over them and today God is still watching over us. His promises are yea and amen. Despite the mischief Again, the posterity of Israel, they were working stronger and stronger. No weapon fashioned against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against thee in judgment, you will condemn. Let us not be timid. Let us just follow the blueprint God is giving to us. As we are going, we are also developing our younger ones. We are giving them responsibilities. And we are overseeing what they are doing. We are supporting the blueprint as our Father is the Lord is exposing it to us. We become unbeatable congregation. We we'll keep on expanding and expanding. I don't know to what extent are you supporting this youth ministry, the impact that our Father in the Lord will have the program and will give ample time for the youth. That is vision. And all of us who support this thing, we build along with him, we encourage the younger ones, God is with us. As long as we remain with him. The Bible says, I and the children God has given to me. We are for signs. We are for wonders. Let us support the, this impact work. The youth churches that we are thinking of. To establish in different places. Encouraging the younger ones to grow. Finally, we have heard tonight, eternal God is our refuge. Underneath us is the mighty hand of God. We are unbeatable because God is with us. I want you to assure yourself, you will excel. You will fulfill the program of God. You will not die without being fulfilled. Everything God has said concerning you, they will come to pass. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for tonight. We thank you very much for the entrance of your word. We are very fortunate in this church that we have a leader that knows your mind. That is not tired is not disturbed, 
is focused. And as you are leading him, he's exposing your mind to us. Father, we pray you will preserve him for us in Jesus' name. We are asking, oh God, that as we hear this thing, we will think about them. We will do them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And our church will be going from power to power, from strength to strength. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We will not cast away our young. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In our days. Physically, spiritually, maritally. We will continue to blossom in Jesus' name. And our Father in the Lord, we see the growth of the church. And we see the great prospect ahead of the church. And we will ever be glad in Jesus' name. The progress of the church will give him more strength. And all of us, Lord, the prosperity you have promised us. You say you make your people greater than the enemy. Lord, no matter what they are doing outside there, we'll be wasting stronger and stronger in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Blessed be thy name. We are prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. It's happening again. GCK Global Crusade with Kumui October edition is here from October 27 to 1st of November 2022, 5 p.m. daily. We're Miriba Memorial Grammar School, BMGS Bori River State, Oguni Land. What must you expect? Great transformation of life and character, peace in your life from ministry, healing of all sicknesses including cancer, deliverance from all oppression, affect, affliction and captivity, recovery from all losses and prosperity. Why? Because God is on the move globally, solving the problems of people through Jesus Christ, using GCK to solve the problem of people. GCK will be in three sessions. Number one, the crusade every evening, 5 p.m. daily. Then the Minister of Professionals through Businessmen Conference, Excellence in Ministry, from 7 a.m. every morning. Youth Impact Academy on Saturday of it, ignited for glory. Expect the obituary of your problem in this program. And whatsoever miracle and whatsoever salvation and whatsoever deliverance whatsoever wonders of wonders whatsoever ye shall ask in my name that will i do when it's super it's great great things great miracles great transformation great salvation it does great things great things of power and now, at a time when many seek for freedom, GCK offers the supernatural. Ministry in Songs is Aaron Williams, our guest music minister. I lift my eyes to where my help comes from. Your prayers are going to be answered. Supernatural freedom beckons only through Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, He says, I will do it. Bringing wonders for all at GCK October edition. He does wonders. Wonders in the heart. Wonders in your soul. Wonders in your spirit. Wonders in your family. And wonders in your community. October 27 till November 1, 2022. Numberless possibilities. Numberless miracles. Numberless exploits. Their satellite and all our social media platforms. Over the radio, on the television, online, anywhere you are, all it takes is to say, I believe it will be done. 
the anointed, appointed, assigned man of God, the international evangelist, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui, says, Everyone has a miracle with his name attached to it. GCK, the gospel to every creature. It's a lot coming your way today.